Hello all, let us talk in a brief about uh, uh, differential signals and how to calculate uh, the impedance. Uh, so these are all some age old techniques which continue to be used uh, uh, forever. <coughs> so first before uh, going into those details, um, differential signals are nothing but two complementary signals which run from uh, the source to the destination. Source destination uh, could be two ICs or uh, <clears throat> you could be running them from an IC to a connector. So there, there could be different scenarios. Uh, so these complementary signals run in parallel with each other. Um, and uh, um, basically when we say complementary, um, the signals are named as P and N uh, in reality. Uh, it could be a clock, it could be data. So depending on the interface that uh, we are using, um, the, the signal name and uh, the number of signals that are involved uh, would be used in the design. So now on the left you see here, uh, this is a simple uh, transmission line calculator. There are a number of uh, famous transmission line calculators. We have just uh, taken an example from everything rf.com. Uh, so what determines the <coughs> impedance? So uh, before going to that, we just need to understand um, that uh, the signals that are routed uh, will have some differential impedance requirements based on their standards. Uh, for example, if you have USB, it has a 90 ohm standard. If you have uh, PC, it would have 100 ohms. Again, based on gen, it will change. But again, uh, just a, 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 a very high level we are talking here. So <clears throat> now, uh, so that impedance need to be maintained between the uh, source and the destination um, and the channel uh, which through which the signal gets transmitted. So to maintain that impedance, uh, um, we have to um, do the PCB layout and the traces need to be routed in such a way uh, that these signals that are transmitted over these traces will always see 100 ohm impedance. So that's the uh, major criteria. So now uh, to see 100 ohm impedance, uh, if you see here, this is simple PCB layout, you can see two signals. Uh, these are complementary signals P and N. Um, example data plus data minus we could say are clock plus or clock minus which are which are separated by a distance D and then each trace is having a width W. Okay and then uh, this is the uh, copper width <coughs> which will be measured in volts generally uh, and then this is the dielectric which is having a height. So here if you see um, the impedance of this particular traces are determined by distance between the traces, the width of the trace, and then uh, the thickness of the trace uh, we'll call here, and then uh, dielectric constant. These are the major parameters. Uh, so that, that is, uh, this is the formula which is used in the background um, where all the parameters would be involved. So <clears throat> this uh, uh, is in the background of these calculators which are available in the uh, internet. So now uh, we have to uh, give our parameters whether it be uh, trace width or the uh, separation between them or the thickness delta constant delta thickness and then based on this uh, uh, the impedance will be calculated. Here we have assumed that it's a 100 ohms and uh, based on the <coughs> adjustment of this uh, um, the differential impedance has been calculated. So this uh, uh, calculation, um, some of the PCB layout engineers, uh, before doing their PCB layout, they ask for stack up from vendors, uh, from the EMS vendors basically, and uh, um, tell them how many layers they'll be using and in each, which layer, what are the kind of signals they'll be routing and what is the impedance that is required. So based on that, uh, <coughs> the MS vendors would generate a stack up and give them and they will uh, route the signals accordingly. That is one approach. And second approach is like uh, uh, design engineers uh, and PCB engineers sit together, uh, use these kind of tools and decide uh, uh, what is the routing that, it, that need to be used. <coughs> what are the uh, signal layers which need to be used for routing and then calculate the 
uh, impedance accordingly. So here, uh, when we say impedance, uh, one of the major um, routing uh, or the consideration that uh, PCB layout engineers take uh, uh, in some of the boards is called controlled impedance. So controlled impedance is something uh, where uh, the impedance need to be the same across the different layers. Example, uh, let us assume I have uh, we have initiated a, a differential trace on a top of top layer, and then <coughs> we are routing this uh, uh, example in a third layer, and then again bringing it to the top. So now the signal is routed in the top layer and also the third layer. So that means. Um, one is a microstrip kind of uh, routing and second one is a, a strip line kind of routing. So based on this kind of uh, uh, topology, whether it be microstrip or strip line, uh, the impedance is going to change. Example, if you use this, here this is a microstrip impedance. So that means which is on the uh, top layer. So if you use a strip line, strip line uh, uh, is nothing but it is embedded between. Uh, so <coughs> if you use inner layer routing, uh, you cannot use the same width and uh, uh, trace width separation. There will be separate calculator for strip line and uh, you have to uh, use that formula and come up with the impedance. Example, if we say 7.5 width <coughs> here uh, the, uh, and uh, 8 mil separation uh, for uh, uh, the 100 ohm uh, uh, tracing on the 100 ohm impedance uh, on the top, if you route this to the inner layers, uh, example we can put it this way so if you assume this is the third layer we have uh, put only layers so first of all these differential signals are rooted this way here and then they come over here so on this layer in order to maintain 100 ohms um, you you cannot use the same width as here you have to recalculate the width for 100 ohms for a strip line configuration and then route so that means uh, uh, for a controlled impedance, there will be different trace widths associated between the top layer and the um, inner layers. We are, you have to calculate we have to calculate accordingly and then uh, use this configuration. So while this is one criteria, uh, another criteria uh, for while routing these signals, uh, uh, which design engineers have to remember is the length matching. Uh, so impedance uh, and then the controlled impedance routing. Uh, and calculating the trace width and secondly the length matching so you uh, we generally have to look at uh, um, the standards to see what is the allowed length matching so what is length matching is basically if you have a and if you have b which is a, let us assume this is a source is a destination uh, if you have routed um, tx plus trace till b uh, and when you root tx minus trace till b uh, the the tx plus and tx minus must have a equal length in an ideal condition uh, but definitely that is difficult to achieve so there will be uh, <clears throat> some offsets or uh, uh, the length matching uh, offset value within which this has to be rooted uh, for the uh, communication to happen properly without any errors uh, without any bit errors to happen in the channel so that uh, uh, length to which uh, this need to be uh, rooted um, is called the length matching where uh, uh, it is very critical uh, to the performance of that particular interface. So that is one more criteria which design engineers have to uh, remember and most of the uh, engineers who have already worked on high speed designs know all these uh, parameters. So these are some of the important things. Now uh, one more uh, point with respect to this length matching is uh, uh, in reality if you see the boards these are very uh, Tense boards. Tense boards in the sense means there will be huge components that will be placed and uh, pop, top populated on the board, and you have very minimal space to root the board. So you generally use the inner layers, and then it is very difficult that ideally uh, a signal from A to B goes directly on the top layer. So you will route this to the bottom layer, and. Uh, um, the lens of Tx and minus should be uh, perfectly matched as mentioned in the respective specifications uh, of these interfaces that are shown. So for this, uh, a kind of routing called serpentine routing would be used for matching, uh, so which we will discuss in the next video. I just wanted to give a view, uh, so th uh, which need to be followed uh, for these uh, differential signals. So here uh, we have listed some of the differential signals which follow 
the discussion which we have talked whether it be usb whether it be pci pci has several gens sata uh, and hdmi sgmi zavi uh, ddr 10g gigabit ethernet there, there are many advanced other uh, uh, ethernet interfaces that are available but we just wanted to uh, restrict this to uh, the commonly used uh, uh, interfaces so hope uh, this is useful to you please comment um, your suggestions or any questions in the video um, please let us know if you need any other information please like and subscribe our channel thank you